Welcome to St Mary's for this service of morning worship, celebrating Pentecost Sunday. And as it says on the front of our service sheets, we celebrate the day that the church was born as the Spirit came at Pentecost. Just a couple of brief notices. Firstly, to say that we will pop our heads out the door near the end of the service to see what the weather is like. And if the weather is fair, we will move through the south door before the end of our service and we'll have the joy of singing with full voice our last hymn uh, before final blessing. So let's be hoping and praying that it doesn't start pouring with rain and then we can sing together um, freely outside and uh, without masks and without needing to sort of hurry around for words. Uh, the other thing to mention is that this is obviously the end of Thy Kingdom Come, uh, those days between Ascension and Pentecost, the church around the world uh, spends particularly praying that line of the Lord's Prayer, prayer Thy Kingdom Come. Uh, but of course, this isn't the end of us uh, praying that prayer. So, as we're celebrating the Spirit of Pentecost, we go out from here continuing to see the Lord's Kingdom Come. We're going to start with our call to worship, a reminder that the Spirit is the means by which God comes to be with us. However we've come to church this morning, whatever our experience has been this week, God comes to be with us by His Spirit. Can I invite you to join in these words? God is Spirit. Let us worship Him in Spirit and truth. The Lord is with us. Let us praise His name together. Perhaps we use this first hymn as a prayer, as you have uh, hung on mouth words and as the musicians have uh, us. Those things that we wish 
to confess and seek forgiveness for. What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. turn your face from us, nor cast us aside. We confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbour. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. Restore us for the sake of your Son, and bring us to heavenly joy. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father forgive us, and by the death of his Son, and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit in all our days. Amen. Amen. The collect the special prayer for today for Pentecost Sunday. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love. And renew the face of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now have our first Bible reading from Acts chapter 2. Our reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 2, verses 1 to 13. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, the crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all of these who are speaking Galileans? Then, how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in their own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
our next hymn speaks of the Holy Spirit. O thou who comest from above. Jesus replied, 
Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Heavenly Father, may my spoken words be faithful to your written word and lead us to the living word, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> so as today, uh, as Hugh has already said, today is Pentecost. The church celebrates Pentecost where we commemorate the coming of God, the Holy Spirit, upon those first followers of Jesus Christ. And we celebrate the dramatic founding of the church that is known as the church's birthday. As she has also said, today is also the official end of Thy Kingdom Come, season of prayer, this global initiative, a prayer initiative that's been joined by millions of Christians all around the world for people to come to know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. But even though it has officially ended, let me add my encouragement to you to to us all to keep on praying. Let's make this a daily habit to pray for God's kingdom to come in the lives of those we know and those we don't know. Now the Christian festival of Pentecost comes from the Jewish festival of Pentecost. Pentecost meaning 50 is the Greek word for the Jewish festival of Shavuot which means weeks and it occurs 50 days or seven weeks after Passover. <clears throat> Along with the festivals of Passover and Tabernacles, Pentecost is one of the three great Jewish pilgrimage festivals where the Jewish people were commanded according to the law of Moses to go up to Jerusalem to worship and offer sacrifices. And that's why we read in Acts that Jerusalem was filled with Jews from so many different countries at that time. Now, ten days previously, Jesus' disciples had witnessed his return to heaven. And before he left them, Jesus had told them to return to Jerusalem and wait to be clothed with power from on high. Jesus had said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. In a few days, you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. At the Last Supper, the night before Jesus died, Jesus had promised them that he wouldn't leave them as orphans, but that the Father would send them another advocate. Some translations say comforter or helper, to be with them forever. The Spirit of Truth to guide them and remind them of all that Jesus had taught them. And so when Jesus had ascended to heaven, his disciples had returned to Jerusalem with great joy, as Luke tells us at the end of his Gospel. They had worshipped in the temple. They weren't downcast, or doubtful, or fearful, but joyful, confident, and expectant, praising God for all that they had experienced, and trusting God for the future, whatever that might hold. And then on the morning of the Feast of Pentecost, when they were gathered together in an upper room, God, the Holy Spirit, came 
with a great noise like a rushing wind filling the house they were in. And they saw what looked like tongues of flames dividing and resting on all of them. So that they were enabled to speak in every kind of language by the Holy Spirit. The noise was loud enough and violent enough to bring people from all around to find out what on earth was going on. And when they came, they each heard the disciples speaking in their own languages. Now it's the crowd, not the disciples, who are utterly amazed and bewildered. The crowd had no idea of what was happening because they had no idea of all that had been happening to this point. But the disciples knew because now the Holy Spirit within them is teaching them and reminding them and everything is making sense. This is what Jesus had promised. This is what Jesus meant when he said that he and the Father would come to them and make their home in them. This is what it felt like to be clothed with power from on high. This is what Jeremiah had prophesied when he said that God would make a new covenant, covenant with his people. That God would put his law in their minds and write it in their hearts. It's what Joel had prophesied when he said God would pour out his spirit on all people. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, says the Lord. And this is what Ezekiel had prophesied when he said that God would put his spirit in them to guide them. The spirit of truth who will guide them into all truth. God, the Holy Spirit, had come in power in rushing wind and fire. Classic Old Testament signs of the presence of God. And he had given the disciples the courage and the ability to go out and speak to all of these people who had gathered from all over the world. So that they were able to tell them about Jesus, the Son of God, in their own languages. So that these people would then go home to Spain, to Turkey, to North Africa, to France, to Greece, to Rome, to Arabia. And tell of the amazing things that they had seen and heard about this Jesus the Christ. At first, some of the crowd had been sceptical. These people must be drunk, they had said. But Peter had then stood up and explained. So that about 3,000 people believed and were baptised that day. It was no coincidence that the Holy Spirit was given during that gathering of Jews from all over the world so that the gospel was preached and the good news exploded all around the world. That same Holy Spirit who equipped and empowered the disciples 2,000 years ago is the same Holy Spirit who moved over the face of the waters at the creation of the universe. Is the same Holy Spirit who spoke through the prophets. Is the same Holy Spirit who equipped people of the Old Testament for particular tasks at particular times. Is the same Holy Spirit who conceived Jesus in Mary's womb. Who came down upon Jesus like a dove at his baptism and who raised Jesus from the dead. It's the same Holy Spirit who has moved the church out from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. And is the same Holy Spirit who indwells, equips, and empowers each of us, each Christian, for mission today. The Holy Spirit opens our eyes to see the light of God's truth. He opens our minds to understand the foolishness of the cross and to accept Christ. He opens our hearts to the brokenness of the world and helps us then to pray for God to heal that brokenness. The Holy Spirit reveals God to us and then helps us to respond to that revelation. Once we put our faith in God the Son, God the Father sends God the Spirit into our hearts to guarantee our eternal life in Christ to guide us and nurture us in our Christian life and to equip us to bring the life of Christ to others. The Holy Spirit develops in us the fruit of the Spirit, 
love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, self-control. The Holy Spirit equips us, empowers us, and encourages us to tell people and to teach people about Jesus. To bring the love of God into our communities in acts of compassion and service. To confront injustice in the world and defend the weak and the oppressed. To speak up for the voiceless. And to protect, sustain and renew God's beautiful and awesome creation. God calls to every human being. Let me into your heart. Let me into your life. And together we will change the world. And if you are yet to fully commit your life to Jesus Christ, I encourage you to take that step. I promise, and I don't often promise much, but I promise this, you will never ever regret it. The only regret that you will have is that you didn't do it sooner. We are all called to be a part of and to play our part in this awesome, life-changing, life-affirming, life-giving movement that is known as the Church. We carry the presence of God into every place we go, into every situation that we encounter, into our workplaces, into our schools, into our homes, into our neighbourhoods. Where there's darkness, we are to bring the light of Christ. Where there's conflict, we are to bring the peace of Christ. Where there's brokenness, we bring the healing of Christ. Where there's friction, we're to be the oil of Christ. Where there's suffering, we are to bring the comfort of Christ. Where there's sadness, we are to bring the joy of Christ. And where there is hopelessness, we bring the hope of Christ. And none of this is from us. We are merely the vessels Fragile and imperfect vessels, of course, but precious vessels nonetheless. Precious to God for who we are, because He has created us, each of us, uniquely. And He loves each of us infinitely. And precious too because of what we hold, the presence and the power of God. But he is not ours to hold on to and to hoard for ourselves. It is not up to us to decide who deserves him and who doesn't deserve him and in what measure. Like the jar of precious oil which the woman anointed Christ's feet with. We are to allow Christ to pour out that precious oil extravagantly and lavishly through us. So that the fragrance of it fills our community with the fragrance of Christ. We have been given authority and power to bless, to speak words of life, to bring life to our families, to our friends, to our neighbours, to strangers and even to our enemies. And when we pray, thy kingdom come, we have already been given the presence and the power of God to be the answer to our own prayers. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, in response to hearing God's word preached to us this morning, we have the opportunity to affirm our faith. So if it's comfortable for you to stand, can I encourage you to do so? And we have the opportunity to respond with the words printed in bold within this affirmation of faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in Him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe and trust in Him. 
And do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in Him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, each of our hymns this morning are voiced as a prayer. This is another prayer we can pray. Steve spoke of us being vessels for the Holy Spirit. This prayer imagines us as a fireplace for the Holy Spirit. Please um, take a seat as uh, we are led by the musicians.
We ask for a successful rollout of the COVID-19 vaccines throughout the world. We give thanks that the UK has now administered over 50 million doses. In our own community, we pray especially for the sick, for Nicholas Royman, and for John Keese and Richard Lloyd, who have recently had operations in the Royal Berkshire Hospital. Generous God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask that we may be strengthened to serve you better. We thank you for the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to help us to understand better your will for us. We thank you for the peace of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to keep us confident in your love, wherever you call us. We thank you for the healing of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to bring reconciliation and wholeness where there is division, sickness and sorrow. We thank you for the gifts of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to equip us for the work which you have given us. We thank you for the fruit of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to reveal in our lives the love of Jesus. We thank you for the breath of your Holy Spirit given by the risen Lord. We ask you to keep the whole church living and departed in the joy of eternal life. Generous God, you sent your Holy Spirit upon your Messiah at the River Jordan and upon the disciples in the upper room. In your mercy, fill us with your Spirit. Hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. Amen. As we conclude our prayers with the words that Jesus taught us, we think today especially of the phrase, Your Kingdom Come. We thank God for calling people to this church for our family service. We pray that this will continue. So we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. With the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever.